Okay, so now what I want to do is I am going over chapter 5 exam review. If some of you at the end of this have a question on uh, chapter 4, I'll, I'll be happy to go through that. All right, or answer any of your questions. But I do want to go ahead and get through 5 today. Monday will be 6, and then uh, that's it. All right, then the review will be complete. I'll have a practice exam hopefully ready by Monday or Tuesday. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I'll. Uh, I'm working on that. I just finished all the exams. So now I have to do the exam uh, practice test for you guys. All right. So please participate. Those of you guys have a long weekend. My advice is do one, two, three, four, five. Do them all again. All right. Do them all again. All right. I, I promise you it'll be exactly the same as this. All right. It's just obviously. A uh, smaller number of questions. All right. So I think there'll be like 70 or 75 ish questions on the exam. All right. So here we go. Now, <clears throat> some of the solutions will be an in interval notation, some of them will be where you just have to select the right answer. All right. So here we go for question number one. All we're doing is adding seven to both sides. So that would be X is greater than 10, which is obviously A. All right. Now, hey, let's say this. Let's say we wanted an interval notation. Interval notation would be 10, comma, infinity, parentheses around both of them. I think you should write that down just in case you forgot. Mm -hmm. Remember, the parentheses is when it's not equal to. A bracket is when it is equal to. All right? So here we have for question number two. We have three is greater than or equal to t plus one. So subtracting one, two. All right, now you have to remember, if two is greater than or equal to t, that means t is less than or equal to two. All right? So less than or equal to 2 means negative infinity to 2 because it's equal to, it's a bracket. So that's why the answer was C. All right. Anybody have any questions? Oh, I remember. All right. Um, well, because I always want to write the variable first. Uh, right. Yeah. That's all right. I always want to write the variable first. All right. Number three, again, all we're doing is dividing by five. So we would say m is less than negative five. Again, less than negative five means your negative infinity to negative five, which means your d. Again, number four, all we're doing is dividing by three. So negative 12 is less than or equal to t. Same principle, t then would have to be greater than or equal to negative 12. Getting us. I don't really remember that. Okay, so so let's go. All right. Do you remember on the number line? This is the number line. All right. So if I'm looking at number three, and it was less than negative five, here would be negative five, and everything less than negative five would be this way. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So remember, I told you over here was negative infinity, and over here was infinity. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what's the matter? Because remember, you always read numbers from left to right. So we're going from negative infinity, and we're stopping at negative 5. Well, what about the 20? We divided both sides by 5, kiddo. Oh. You have to solve it first. Right, solving it first. Good. What? I'm not dividing a negative. That's an equal to sign. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's okay. All right. So T is greater than or equal to negative 12. So that was A. What? Is this an open circle closed? Yes. Oh. Open is when it's just less than or greater than. Closed is when it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Okay. Now, number five. All right. We've got to solve this. All right. So here we go. 6Y minus 8. 
greater than 4y plus 26, subtracting 4y, subtracting 4y, adding 8, adding 8. So I have 2y greater than 34, dividing by 2, y is greater than 17. So if I'm greater than 17, that means I'm starting at 17 and going to infinity. All right, hopefully that's coming back now. Everybody good? Yeah, that's good now. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Good for you. Yeah, you should always draw it if you're having trouble. If you're having trouble, this would be 17, open circle, going to the right. Negative 17 would be over here. Right? Right, if it's not including 17. If it was greater than or equal to, it would be a solid. You hear me, right? All right, so now let's look at number six. All right, distributing a three. All right, if I were to distribute that three, it would end up being 6D, 6D minus three, greater than or equal to minus, minus three, right? 6D minus three is greater than or equal to 8D minus 12 minus three. Now, again, this is the time you make your mistake, so speak up. Go. I'm distributing in 3, right? 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. It's 12. Oh, Yeah, that's okay. What? Come on. Yeah, I don't care. I'm not grading your work on the exam. All right, I'm just telling you, be careful. All right. So now, 6D minus 3 is greater than or equal to 8D minus 15. Now, subtracting 6D, because I want it to be positive in my opinion. Adding 15, adding 15. So now I have 2D and then 12, dividing by 2, and then you rewrite it. Right? Less than or equal to 6. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is like isn't about this work. So, like, on the exam, is it going to be those work on this one? Yeah. It's a multiple choice. Easy. Yeah, easy. What? Because remember, this is what I showed you before. If I said 3 is greater than 1, if you rewrite 1 compared to 3, what happens to the sign? That's why. You with me on that? All right. Also, don't forget, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to do what to the inequality sign also? Change it. Make sure you write that down. Multiply or divide by a negative, always change the sign. <coughs> Multiply or divide by a negative, change the sign. What? Less than or equal to 6. All right, that's called set builder notation. I'm not going to put that on the exam, even though it just means D such that D is less than or equal to 6. Old school stuff. All right. What? Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you change the inequality sign. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you change the inequality sign. All right? No playing around, boys. I mean it. Sit down. Fall back and crack your head open. I'm going to be in trouble. Continue on. Six. Six is at least. What does six at, is at least mean? Yeah, it's greater than or equal to. If I have at least ten dollars in my pocket, it means I have ten or more. So six is at least four more than a number. Now, if I have at least, can it be equal to? Yeah. 
So how do I write four more than a number? Yes. All right. Actually, they're all these. All right, next, number eight. All right, it says, Philip has between 200 and 300 baseball cards. All right, so here we go. This statement right here says he has what? Less than 300. Come on now. You got to look up. Stop daydreaming. He has less than 300. Now, if you read it backwards, I want everybody to practice, see what I mean. If I start with this P right here, and I read in this direction, what does that say? P is greater than 200. That's how you have to look at that. Or I like to just tell kids this just means somewhere be P is somewhere between what? 200 and 300. All right. Which I believe is what? The correct answer. The correct answer is A on that. All right. And I'm trying to tell you, I'm just kind of putting the basic questions on the test. Nothing that difficult. I just need to make sure you recognize everything. It's not going to be that difficult. But if you don't practice, if you don't do some work over the weekend, you're not going to get up on Thursday night and start studying and say, wow, everything's going good. It's not. All right, practice now. Pay attention. Write notes down. Don't daydream. All right, here we go. Next. So this one says M is greater than negative 1 and it's less than 1. So you have to be greater than or equal to I'm sorry, greater than negative 1. So if it's greater than negative 1, it could be A. No, it can't be A because why? Because the circle is closed. So cross out A. It's filled in. Equal to. Look, come on. This is not filled in. You understand that? That means it's greater than that number, not equal to. You have to write that down. Write that down. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to is your solid. All right? Greater than or less than is your open circle. All right? So now I know that it is not A. B, it says that it, B is correct. It is greater than negative 1. I know C is greater than negative 1. D is incorrect. Now I'm looking at the other choice. Less than or equal to. Not equal to there. So it has to be what? It has to be C. Come on, that's a really good review problem of the solid and open. All right, what? No, I'm not doing the test. I'm doing the review. This is what I'm doing. Okay. I already explained exactly what's going to be on the exam. All right, here we go for this. Now, this says that it is less than or equal to, less than or equal to negative 1, which is nice because there is only what? One answer that is less than or equal to. All right, or greater than or equal to 3. All right, so here we go. Let's solve this. 2a plus 1 is greater than 9. That means 2a is greater than 8. That means a is greater than 4. Or a is less than negative 1. All right, so sometimes I, I, I'm agreeing with someone who said earlier, let's put it on a number line so you can see it better. Here is negative 1. Here is 4. Don't forget negative infinity is over here. And infinity is over here. So if I'm greater than 4, it would be an open circle going to the right. If I'm less than negative 1, open circle going to the left. Does everybody hear me on this? And now we want from negative infinity to negative 1 and 4 to infinity. So it has to be what? It has to be A. Everybody good? 
All right. Now, um, here, I just want, I think this is a good one to review, absolute value inequalities. So here we go. So I'm going to start with A. Let's see how that is. So for an absolute value inequality, we had to write, um, we had to write it as it is. And then you had to change the sign. So it would be x minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 1. So I need everybody to concentrate on what I'm just saying. To solve an absolute value inequality, you have to write it the way you see it without the absolute value. Then you rewrite it without the absolute value. And you change the inequality sign. And you change the sign of the number. I don't, I, I, what do you mean? I'm showing you how to do it. No, I'm starting. I'm sorry. I'm starting with A if you're not understanding. And then I'm going to do B. And then I'm going to do C. And then I'm going to do D. You with me now, right? Because I, I don't want you to be able to look at that and say, well, that's obviously this answer. Even though when you get to algebra 2, you'll be able to do that. All right? So here we go. If I solve this, this says X is less than or equal to. Four. Does that look good so far? Yes, it looks good so far because here I am at four and I'm going less than. Good job. All right, now I'm going to add three. So that would make x greater than or equal to, uh-oh, two. Is that good? No. All right, because it's greater than or equal to negative two, not positive two. You see that? All right. So I cross out A. Now I'm going to do B. Absolute value X minus 1 is less than or equal to 3. X minus 1 less than or equal to 3. X minus 1 greater than or equal to negative 3. Now when I add 1, I get X is less than or equal to 4. Is that good? Yes. Add 1. X is greater than or equal to negative 2. That's the answer. All right, there you have it. That's a great review of solving absolute value inequalities. Thank you. All right, here we go. So next, all right, solving absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 2. So let's do that. Absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 2, so we write it again. x minus 3 is less than 2. x minus 3 is greater than negative 2. Notice the math is not hard. The intent is just to see if you remember how to do absolute value inequalities. Let me see that. Right? So now we're just adding 2, or adding 3. So that means x is less than what? 5. x is greater than 1. So if I'm on my number line, Here's 1. Here's 5. If I'm less than 5, greater than 1. Everything in between. All right, so if I'm everything in between, the answer is definitely what? A. Definitely A. Everybody good with this? Go ahead. Come on. Speak up. Speak up. Yes. We just did, we're on 13 now. We did 12 just a second ago. All right. So this is all number 13. All of this over here was number 12. All right. And we just had to do process of elimination on that. Sometimes that's what happens on a, on a multiple choice test. All right. Is everybody ready? All right. So now, am I shading above or below here? So I know it is greater than is it a solid or dotted solid. solid so that means i know it's greater than or equal to now horizontal line is it x equals or y equals y. y equals horizontal is always y equals so now i know it's y is greater than or equal to one d I are you shading above the line or below the line? 
So above, what do you think that is? Nope. More, greater than. We're doing inequality, so above is greater, below is what? If I draw this line, this is shaded above, so that's greater than. This is shaded what? Less than. This is above, therefore it is greater than. I know, but how do you know it's greater than? Because it's a solid line. The next one down there, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know why. There it is. It's back. Now the next one is a what? Dotted, Dotted line, shaded what? Greater than. So it's just greater than. It's just greater than. So on here, I like to say, okay, it's greater than, so I know it's not A. I know it's not C. Now, is the Y intercept 1 or is the Y intercept 2? 2. Correct answer. B. Now, listen, guys. You, if, if all you do, right, is not understand the concept, right, and you're trying to use your calculator all the time or, you know, you're, you're going to not finish the exam, right? I, I'm telling you, I just think that's simple. If you know that, that's, that's a 30-second problem. What? Well, here is the y-axis. Let me find the y-axis. Here is the y-axis. Do you agree? And here is where it crosses the y-axis. What is that point? Are you guessing or are you telling me it's two? Yeah, it's two, definitely, right? And again, the reason we know that is because down here is the x-axis. So I counted up two. All right, that's not difficult. All right, next. Are we shading above or, uh-oh. Yeah, so again, this one I, I spoke too soon. I'm just trying to figure out what point is a solution. So let's plot the point <laughs> two, one. 2, 1. Is that a solution? No. 1, 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. Is that a solution? Why not? Because it's an inequality. It's shaded. Do you not see this? You see what I'm saying? Something on the line would not be a solution because it's dotted. You hear me? All right, again, I'm hoping you're making yourself some notes. All right, I see some of you, some of you are daydreaming. What? Say, I didn't hear you. Because it's the inequality. Y is greater than. Y is greater than. That means everything above the line is the answer. Everything in the shaded area. Do you agree with me? Is the line part of the solution? No. Is the line part of the solution now? Yes. If I put it equal to, that would make this a solid line. So that means it would include it. Do you with me or not? Anybody have any questions? All right. Let's go. So I just have to do what? Add seven eighths. So R is greater than, I looked at the answers, one and seven eighths. Wow, I don't know why that was so simple. All right, here we go, number 18. All right, again, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to create uh, a negative just to review. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 17x, subtract 5. So that would give me what? Negative 5x is greater than or equal to negative 15. So now I have to divide by negative 5, correct? Change the, sign. Change the sign. So x is what? Less than or equal to 3. Less than or equal to 3. So correct answer is what? D. Are we okay with that? Good. All right, here we go. Let's check out 19 more distributive property. 
6m minus 14 minus 6m greater than 10m <coughs> minus 15 minus m. Does everybody see that? Combining terms now. Oh, that was a good one because 6m, those cancel. So now I have negative 14 <coughs> greater than 9m minus 15. Everybody okay with that? So now I have 1 is greater than 9m divided by 9. 1 ninth is greater than m. So that means m is less than 1 ninth. Look at that. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, here we go, 20. So if his income is based on his salary, now it says at least 37,500 plus 5% 5 of his sales. So at least means it could be greater than or equal to 37,500 is what he's getting paid, plus he gets 5% of all the sales. So I think he's correct. C. Yep. Thanks for the study. That works. Okay, now you have a fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal. So here we're going to do 7 over 2, 7 over 2. So n has to be less than or equal to 14. Again, A. Okay, some of you are having trouble with 4 times 7 over 2. 4 divided by 2 times 7. There you go. Yes, if you do 4 times 7 divided by 2, I'm not arguing. Right? If you divide first, it makes the numbers easier, though. All right? Next, number 22, distributing 3t minus 2t plus 2 greater than or equal to 5t minus 8 minus 4t. t plus 2 greater than or equal to t minus 8. If I subtract the t's, 2 is greater than or equal to negative 8. When is that true? Yeah. Yeah. That means no motion. Always, always. God gracious. When is 2 greater than negative 8? Oh, Never. Always. Never. Some of you are like, come on, falling. I know. I'm agreeing with you. Think for yourself. When is 2 greater than negative 8 again? Oh. Always. Always. No, negative 8. Oh, oh. Always two is always greater than negative eight. Two is always greater than negative eight. Doesn't matter that it's uh it's not when is two equal to negative eight? I know Why would it matter? Uh, it's either a true statement or a false statement. All right, here we go. Add 11 to both sides. So we have 15.2 is greater than t. Therefore, t is less than 15.2. If it's less than 15.2, that means we're going from negative infinity to 15.2. All right, if you had to put that on a number line, remember it would be 15.2. I always like to put negative 15.2. It's opposite, and then it would be open circle at 15.2 going to the left. Yeah. You having trouble with 11 plus 
You with me on that? Right, you're adding 11 to both sides. Adding 11. All right, here we go. All right, so add 1. 2x is greater than 8, so x is greater than what? 4. Open circle at 4, greater than. Moving on. Subtract 38. Subtract 38. Negative 89, less than or equal to x. So x is greater than or equal to negative 89. Remember, I'm switching them around, right? Again, I'm going to show you one more time. If 3 is greater than 1, 1 is less than 3. When you reorder it, the inequality changes. Do you understand that? All right? You good with that? Good. All right, adding 3 eighths to both sides. Again, practicing our fractions. Do not use a calculator for that. That's embarrassing. 1 half is how many eighths? Four, thank you. So M is greater than seven eighths. So that would be seven eighths to infinity. Okay, multiplying by what? Negative, Negative two. two. So what happens to the inequality sign? Uh, switches. switches. So T is T less is than eight. negative eight. So the correct answer was A. All right. Again, we're dividing by a negative, right? So switch the sign. So Z is greater than, so that would be 12. Oh, it'll be negative 12, sorry. Yeah, you don't want the variable to be negative, just like always. Anybody have any questions with greater than negative 12? So it looks to me like D. Everybody good? All right, here we go. 29. To me, again, I'm going to keep it. Subtract 4W. Add 20. So I would end up with 14 is greater than 2W. So 7 is greater than W. So W must be what? less than 7. All right? If w is less than 7, that means you're going from negative infinity to 7. Is it c? No, I think it's a. All right, here we go. For number 30, distributing the negative, 8r minus 5r minus 4 is greater than or equal to negative 31. What's 8R minus 5R? 3R. So I have 3R minus 4 greater than or equal to negative 31. Add 4 to both sides. 3R is greater than or equal to negative 27. Divide by 3. R is greater than or equal to negative 9. We okay with B? I'm listening quickly. Um, it's just an old way of writing it, and I, I'm gonna. That's not gonna be on the test, okay? All right. I, I removed all those. All right. So it just means R such that. That's how they used to write it. Formal. It's called set theory. All right. Set builder notation. All right. Depending on what school you go to, they use it still. What high school? All right. So here we go. When is y less than negative three? So far, a is good. B is no good. C is definitely no good. Wow, how easy was that? That's what I'm telling you. That's how I think you should do it. All right, you eliminate them. All right, you eliminate them. All right? Correct answer, A. All right? So here we go. This just means... The
<laughs> Girl, scum. Don't interrupt me. What you doing? Should I set two points? Or just same to me? I don't know what you mean. Like a open circle and a closed circle. Open circle, open circle is this. Closed circle is this. So C and D or no? C and D or no. I'm just asking because... I don't know what you mean. I don't know. This is... This is less than negative three. All of them are open circles. Just ask me, is there ever I know, I'm trying to help. Come on, spit it out. I, I'm is, rude. Would C ever be right in my question? No, like no, no. Right. Is now occasionally it could be because you know, if I said y is, for example, less than negative 3 or y is less than negative 1, they could go in the same direction. But that's not going to be on your exam. All right, but listen, this is what I'm trying to tell you, and everybody I try to tell, understand is better than trying to memorize, right? So this is what I'm saying. On this particular problem, I was able to just quickly eliminate C, D, and E, or C, B, D. You agree? You good? You sure? All right, let's go. Are you okay with number 32 then? The answer for 32 is D. You okay with that being D? Open is parentheses, closed is a bracket. All right. Now, in this case, remember you had to subtract 5, subtract 5, <clears throat> subtract 5. So end up with negative 9 is less than 3t is less than or equal to 15. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Negative 3 is less than t less than or equal to 5. So that means we are between negative 3 and 5. Everybody happy with that? Amy, you okay? Anybody else? All right, here we go. Here, we're just adding them individually. Add 4, add 4, subtract 4t, subtract 4t. Negative 3t is greater than or equal to 12. Dividing by negative 3, t is less than or equal to negative 4. What? Opposite. And is when they're going together. When you do the interval notation, yeah. Well, let's solve this one out. So 7t is greater than 14, so t is greater than 2. So I'm less than negative 4, so a is out. And I'm greater than 2, right? So b is out, right? Why is C out? Well, isn't isn't it supposed to be solid? Oh, then D is out. Thank you. That's good. That's how I want you to do it. You run them off. Write them off one by one. All right? Correct answer is C. Okay, so here the same principle. We're going to review our absolute value inequalities. So the, again, so I understand this is just you got to do A, B, C, D to get the right answer. It's annoying. All right, but they're easy. X minus 2, I'm going to write this one, is less than 3. So we write X minus 2 is less than 3. X minus 2 is greater than negative 3. So X is less than 5. Does that work? Does that work? Is X? No, because it's greater than 5. So it's not a... So now that I know it's greater than, I probably could eliminate what other choice. Someone tell me. Come on. 
good D because D is the other what? Less than. <coughs> All right, we want it to be greater than five. Right? Oh, so we also could eliminate what now? B because it's not equal to. All right, that was a nice one. All right? Again, if you're good at standardized tests, that's a good thing to know right there. Everybody see that? All right, hopefully you're paying attention. Because this is solid, it had to be greater than or equal to, right? So it couldn't have been the less thans. And because it was equal to, it had to be C. All right, so now let's look at 36. You have to do this on your own now. So 2x minus 3 is greater than 4. 2x minus 3 is less than negative 4. 2x is greater than 7. x is greater than 7 over 2. So if x is greater than 7 over 2, that's also 3.5, right? So that means it's got to be 3.5 to infinity. Yeah, it can't be C either or B. Good. So now let's do the other one. Add 3. 2x is less than negative 1. x is less than negative 1 half. So this was positive one half. So it's A. I hope you guys are paying attention to how I'm solving these. I think that's a really good way to do a standardized test. Right? Should. Now that's what I'm saying. Go home this weekend and do more and you'll be ready. All right? Hour on Saturday, hour on Sunday, or decide, you know, what you're weakest on and, you know, all right? Here we go. Which pair, all right, this one I don't like either because it's just what? Plugging in, right? So 12 plus the y value is 3. Is that less than or equal to negative 3 times negative 16? 15, is that less than or equal to 48? I got lucky. I'm plugging in, this is the x, this so is the y. I'm not to solve. I'm the, yeah, I'm not trying to solve. Can you try to solve it? How are you going to do that? I was going to use the y. No. No. <coughs> you see what I'm saying, right? You're just deciding whether the point works. That's all. I plugged them in here. Look, 12 plus y is less than or equal to negative 3x. I plugged the numbers in. All right, 38. Now, to check out 38, it's greater than, so I know it's not less than. The y-intercept is 1, so there's a y-intercept. Now, you got to look at the slope. Up 1 and over 2. So the slope is 1 half. Correct answer was D. Thank you. All right. Now, again, 39, and then we're done. All right. Just plugging in. All right. So I have here 3 plus 1. Is that greater than 1 plus 3? Now remember, this 2 went in for X right here. Half of 2 is 1. So is 4 greater than 4? No. So A is not the right answer. So now you plug in negative 4 and 0. So if I plug 0 in for Y, I get 0 plus 1 is greater than half of negative 4 plus 3. 0 plus 1 is greater than negative 2 plus 3. 1 is greater than 1 again. No. All right, so here we go. C, I'm plugging in 1 for x and 2 for y. 2 plus 1, is that greater than 1 half plus 3? Is 3 greater than 3 and 1 half? No. So now 1 plus 1 is greater than negative 3 halves plus 3. 2 is greater than 1.5 or 3 halves. That is true. The correct answer had to be D. Pointing in Carter's stayed. Beautiful. Easy. Thank you guys. All right. Very, very good.
All right, study over the weekend, please. Very, very important.